how have you tapped into the emotion ahead of the game this weekend? Oh, well, we haven't tapped into it just as, just as yet, but um, we'd be crazy if we didn't. He's been such a decorated servant, and, and we've got uh, we've got Zeebs as well. You know, they, these guys um, have been such uh, great players for our footy club, and. You know, Cunners is going to play this week. He, he'll play his last game for the footy club against the Bombers, which is a home game. Um, and a chance for all our members to get there and say uh, say thanks to what's been a stellar career for our footy club. And so he plays his, uh, his last game for the club next week against Richmond at the MCG. So, um, you know, the next couple of weeks is the last chance to see these guys that have been running around for 14 or 15 years and um, wearing our colours with such, uh, such pride and... Um, and dignity, and um, yeah, so we, we're looking forward to the next two weeks. Not that the group needs any more motivation to, to get that breakthrough win, but does it give them a little bit of extra fight to do it for these guys? Yeah, well, I hope so. I hope so. Um, if you're uh, if you're acknowledge, acknowledging the, uh, the significant contribution that those two guys have made to our club, then it's going to be hard pressed to find motivation to actually play, isn't it? So um, yeah, I'd uh, I'd reckon it'd be pretty special. I mean, Cunners. Um, you know, he's a big part of his career was was coached by Scotty too. He's the opposition coach this week, so I think that's a that's a, a touching part to the um, the whole way this has unfolded as well. That um, you know, Scotty had such a big influence on on Cunners' career. Um, so it'll be there'll be a special moment between those two, I'm sure, as, as well as uh, whether that's uh, before or after the game. So. Um, should be a um, should be a great contest. We're really looking forward to it, and yeah, paying tribute to a couple of decorated servants. Just on Ben Cunnington, what makes him so special? I mean, a lot of North Melbourne supporters adore Ben Cunnington and the way he's gone about it, but oh, he hasn't got the the plaudits he deserves from the wide community. He's a two-time best and fairest winner here. What have you noticed in the, in the time you've been here that makes him so special? Oh, I don't think it's any any surprise. I, don't, I think perhaps. That hasn't had the plaudits because he hasn't sought them at all. Like he's, he's probably the probably the most um, endearing feature for me is just his, his humility. Um, just so so much about um, the team and others, and doesn't ever seek the seek the fanfare. And um, and he's just been able to stay in the stay in the shadows of the of the football club really, which suits him. And um, but. Um, but yeah, anyone, anyone who's played with him, and certainly those who uh, coach against him or play against him, yeah, <laughs> they know they've been in a contest when you've played against Ben Cunnington. Um, now, you know, unfortunately, his last last three or four years have been been riddled by misfortune with um, with having to recover from two bouts of of um, cancer. But um, you know, his first ten years of his of his footy career. Um, Geez, he was he was tough to play on. He's so um, he's so thick set and it's so hard to move in, in contests. He was tough and brave, um, and he was very very clever with his hands. And um, but yeah, all his teammates just love him because he's so humble. You stood here last Friday. Had a great line on George Wardlaw. We get the opportunity to coach him for the first time on Saturday. Yeah, well, I'm hoping so. He's um, he's been able to complete the full week of training, and um, we'll sit down after this with the medical staff and. Um, see that he's ticked all the, all the boxes, and, um, and we just need to give some consideration whether or not um, he comes back through the, the VFL program or the AFL program. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll do that this afternoon once we've spoken to the medical staff and the conditioning staff and see what's best for him because we want him if he if he plays again from this week, we want him to you know finish the last three games and um, and you know finish finish the season fit and healthy, and so we'll. That will be will be more mindful of that than just pushing him back into AFL footy in the first week. But having said that, we might decide to pick him too. So we'll we'll just wait and see this afternoon. Just on George, are you, you concerned that his hamstring issues are going to be a factor in his career, or are you confident he can get over them? Because we know how much of an impact had in his draft year. He had such a good block before the most recent one. Yeah, well, this is, for for mine, it's just his, his training age is next to zero. I don't mean that in a bad way, um, but in terms of AFL pre seasons that he's done, he hasn't even done one here yet. Um, because his one last, you know, in the leading to this season was interrupted. So his training age, what we talk about, is, is next to zero in terms of AFL programs. So um, we're really, really confident. As we've seen, you know, we, we stripped him back and we've been able to get, um, you know, he's probably played about 10 or 11 games this year, you know, seven in the seniors and three or four in the, in the twos. 
Um, hopefully he gets another another three. So if we could get 13, 14 games out of him after an interrupted pre-season, uh, we'd be really happy with that. That's why it's not so critical that he plays in the AFL this week as much as he just finishes the season. Um, but then it's just getting a full pre-season into him and then more conditioning throughout the match practice of next next season. And hopefully by the time he's 22, he's just a hardened pro in terms of his running capacity. And I'd reckon that resilience will allow him and training will allow him to have resilience to prevent some of these soft tissue injuries. What are your hopes over the next three weeks? I mean, clearly, clearly a win would, would send the guys into the off-season with, with some nice belief, but have you got some other, I guess, I guess target points you'd, you'd like to Yeah, you know, there's, there's lots of things to gain, and we saw that in last week's game against Melbourne. You know, the, you know Collingwood have lost their last two, and Port Adelaide have lost four on the, on the bounce, and, um, you know, Brisbane are spluttering a little bit, but Melbourne have won their last five and seem to be... The, the side that's playing the best footy at, at this point in time. And, you know, for um, certainly about the first 40 minutes of the game last week, we really served it up to the Melbourne side and could have quite easily been five or six goals up halfway through the second quarter. So we're disappointed we were un not unable to sustain that for a full four quarters. Um, but they're the little wins that we have along the way that we say, wow, we're actually able to serve it up to a pretty good opponent for... Um, 40 or 45 minutes of a game. Our challenge is how can we push that into 60 minutes and then into 80 minutes and then be able to do what Melbourne do, even if they're behind. They've just got this belief and faith, like Collingwood and the really good sides, um, that they can still get the job done even if they don't start the game particularly well. So um, we've got a lot of growth to, do, to have in that area, but we're just searching for, for little wins within games and hopefully if we if we can sustain it for longer, then we might get a W at the end of a, a game somewhere in the next three. But um, yeah, it's just there's still so much to get out of the season. If it, even if it's just as simple as George Wardlaw getting back there and playing again, or it's as simple as um, acknowledging the decorated servants of our footy club in Cunnington and Zebel and sending them off in the right way. Um, those things are really important to us as a footy club, and um, they're their opportunity for us to celebrate. It might not necessarily be with a win. Um, but it will be a win in terms of the careers of Cunnington and Zebel. Some footy clubs at the moment making some decisions with department rights. Would you like to see Brett Ratton back here full time next year? Yeah, well, Rats is, um, Rats is brief pretty much was could you come in and help us out for three days a week and just plant a few trees in between? Um, and, um, you yeah, know, he'd had a tumultuous previous six months to him coming to, to North Melbourne. Yeah, it's been well documented. and. It's a, it's a tough caper to, to fall out of a footy club once, but he's fallen out of a footy club twice. And um, that's, uh, that's tough to endure. And um, we asked him to come back here for, for 12 months to, to help us out. And um, that'll expire in about a month's time. And we'll sit down with him at the end of the year and see what he wants to do. Um, we'd love to have him involved at the, at the footy club, but um, we've, got to, we've got to work out just for whether the moon's aligned for him too. You know, like he's, uh, he's got a family and we've got to, address what his needs are going forward and uh, we'll see whether all that unfolds in the next month or so. Did he ever finish planting those trees? I know he said he had 3,000. <laughs> well, I can guarantee you, tell you one thing, mate, he didn't get me to help him out, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what he did with those trees. He, he, uh, he gave me three or four of them, so I've, I've planted them down in my patch of land down on the peninsula, and, but Rats has got plenty more than three and four. Um, so um, yeah, not sure what he's done in that space, but he'll get back into it in about three or four weeks' time. Just on the player front, um, Todd Goldstein's had a really an incredible year, really, and he's, he's expressed his interest of, of going around again. Are you, are, you, are you keen to keep him around for one year, and how do you balance that when you've got a, a young ruck like, like Tristan Sherry, who you obviously want to get as much game time? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, Goldie's a little bit like rats. We, we said right from the get go, let's just leave it until the fullness of the, the season being completed, and then um, work out where, where we're going and, and how he fits into that too, and what he wants to do. Um, I'm, I, I, I think. It, there's a, there's a fair chance that Goldie wants to continue to play. He wants to play for as long as he can. And, um, and we're at that stage, you know, he's, he, I think he's 35 or thereabouts, uh, where we need to be making some, making some decisions in that space too. But um, he's made a pretty helpful contribution for us over the course of this year. And um, there's nothing to suggest with the way that he's going about it that he couldn't continue on. But we just need to look at our, our, our ruck stocks and also give consideration to what he wants to do. And we'll do that in three or four weeks' time. You need a bit of a look at this management in the past couple of months. Have you got a future in that? No, nah. <laughs> none whatsoever. I'm happy to keep that with uh, with Toddy Viney and Brady Rawlings and Scotty Clayton, Will Thurstfield. They're the, they're the gurus in that space. But um, I actually have enjoyed that, that three or four weeks where 
Um, or we got to watch some of the under-18 championships, which you don't get a, the time to do usually in season. So um, I really enjoyed that and getting across that. And we're, we're hoping to, um, to have some picks in the, in the first and second round that we can utilise that with. And um, so it's good to get a feel for it. But yeah, in, in terms of who's in charge of that, it's not me.